a northern woman, and her adopted child, an orphan named Mortimer, an orphan named Mortimer Hughie, Higgy, afflicted with epilepsy and suffering at the time from white swelling on one of his legs, and compelled to walk on crutches in consequence. And the two ministers, in spite of the pleadings of the victims, dragged them to the bush, tarred and feathered them, and afterward burned them at the stake in the city of Charleston. You remember perfectly well what a stir it made. You remember perfectly well that even the Charleston Courier stigmatized the act as being unpleasant, of questionable propriety, and scarcely justifiable, and likewise that it would not be matter of surprise if retaliation ensued. And you remember also that this thing was the cause of the Massachusetts outrage. Who indeed were the two Massachusetts ministers, and who were the two southern women they burned? I do not need to remind you, Admiral, with your intimate knowledge of history, that Waite was the nephew of the woman burned in Charleston, and Granger was her cousin in the second degree, and that the woman they burned in Boston was the wife of John H. Morgan, and they, the still-loved but divorced wife of Winthrop L. Willis. Now, Admiral, it is only fair that you should acknowledge that the first provocation came from the southern preachers and that the northern ones were justified in retaliating. In your arguments, you never yet have shown the least disposition to withhold a just verdict or be in any wise unfair with when authoritative history condemned your position. And therefore, I have no hesitation in asking you to take the original blame from the Massachusetts ministers in this matter and transfer it to the South Carolina clergyman where it justly belongs. The Admiral was conquered. The sweet-spoken creature who swallowed his fraudulent history as if it were the bread of life basked in his furious blasphemy as if it were generous sunshine, found only calm, even-handed Justin justice in his rampant partisanship, and flooded him with invented history to so sugar-coated with flattery and deference that there was no rejecting it, and too many for him. He stammered some awkward, profane sentences about the blank, 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 blank Willis and Morgan business having escaped his memory, but that he remembered it now. And then, under pretense of giving fans some medicine for an imaginary cough, drew out of the battle and went away, a vanquished man. Then cheers and laughter went up, and Williams, the ship's benefactor, was a hero. The news went about the vessel. Champagne was ordered. An enthusiastic reception instituted in the smoking room. And everybody flocked thither to shake hands with the conqueror. The wheelsman said afterward that the admiral stood up behind the pilot house and ripped and cursed all to himself till he loosened the smokestack guys and becalmed the mainsail. The admiral's power was broken. After that, if he began an argument, somebody would bring Williams, and the old man would grow weak and begin to quiet down at once. And as soon as he was done, Williams in his dual case in insinuating way would invent some history referring for proof to the old man's own excellent memory and to copies of the old guard known no not to be in his possession. That would turn the tables completely and leave the admiral all, abor all abroad and helpless. By and by he came to so dread Williams and his gilded tongue that he would stop talking when he saw him approach, 
and finally ceased to mention politics altogether. And from that time forward, there was entire peace and serenity in the ship. Chapter 63 Arrival at the Islands, Honolulu, what I saw there, dress and habits of the inhabitants, the animal kingdom, fruits and delightful effects. On a certain bright morning in the island, the islands hove in sight, lying low on the lonely sea, and everybody climbed to the upper deck to look. After 2,000 miles of watery solitude, the vision was a welcome one. As we approached the imposing promontory of Diamond Head rose up out of the ocean, its rugged front softened by the hazy distance. And presently the details of the land began to make themselves manifest. First the line of beach, then the plumed coconut trees of the tropics. Then cabins of the natives, then the white town of Honolulu, said to contain between 12 and 15,000 inhabitants, spread over a dead level, with streets from 20 to 30 feet wide, solid and level as a floor, most of them straight as a line, and few as crooked as a corkscrew. The further I traveled through the town, the better I liked it. Every step revealed a new contrast, disclosed something I was unaccustomed to. In place of the grand mud-colored brown fronts of San Francisco, I saw dwellings built of straw, adobes, and cream-colored pebble and shell conglomerated coral cut into oblong blocks and laid in cement. Also a great number of neat white cottages with green window shutters in place of front yards like billiard tables with iron fences around them. I saw these homes surrounded by ample yards thickly clad with green grass and shaded by tall trees through whose dense foliage the sun could scarcely penetrate. In place of the customary geranium, calla lily, etc., languishing in dust and general debility, I saw luxurious banks and thickets of flowers, fresh, fresh as a meadow after a rain, and glowing with the richest dyes. In place of the dingy horrors of San Francisco's pleasure grove, the willows. I saw huge-bodied, wide-spreading forest trees with strange names and stranger appearance, trees that cast a shadow like a thundercloud and were able to stand alone without being tied to green poles in place of goldfish wiggling around in glass globes assuming countless shades and degrees of distortion through the magnifying and diminishing qualities of their transparent prison houses. I saw cats, Tom cats, Mary Ann cats, long-tailed cats, bob-tailed cats, blind cats, one-eyed cats, wall-eyed cats, cross-eyed cats, gray cats, black cats, white cats, yellow cats, striped cats, spotted cats, tame cats, 